we need a technique to estim estimate an unknown value between two known data points. That technique is called linear interpolation, or just interpolation for short. In this video, we'll cover a five-step process for how to use linear interpolation to solve these problems. And while five steps may sound like a lot, I promise that after using them a few times, they'll go very quickly. So let's get started. <laughs> First, some definitions. Index values are typically on the left or the top of a table and are used to look up the answers. For example, when looking up pressure altitude conversion factors, the altimeter setting would be the index value. The intermediate value is between two index values, and it's the value we're interested in finding an answer for. In the first problem, the intermediate value would be 29.87. In the second problem, the intermediate value would be 1,300 feet pressure altitude. And in the third problem, the intermediate value would be a pressure altitude of 4,500 feet. Resulting values are the result that is tied to the index value. For example, the resulting value for the altimeter setting of 29.7 is 205 feet. The resulting value for a pressure altitude of 1,000 feet at 20 degrees Celsius is a ground roll of 715 feet, and the resulting value for 3,000 feet in the winds aloft forecast at Joliet is 230 degrees at 17 knots. Now that we know these definitions, let's use the five-step process on the pressure altitude conversion factor problem. <laughs> The first step is to determine the difference between the two nearest index values. Since we're trying to find the conversion factor for 29.87, the two nearest index values would be 29.8 and 29.9. Subtracting the two gives us a difference of 0.1. The second step is to find the difference between the first index value and the intermediate value. In our case, that would be 29.87 minus 29.8, or a difference of 0.07. The third step is to find the difference between the resulting values that correspond to the two nearest index values. In this instance, 29.8 has a resulting value of 112, and 29.9's resulting value is 20. Subtracting these two leaves 92. In step 4, we'll use the equation step 2 result times step 3 result divided by step 1 result. Warning, math explanation here. This equation is just a shortcut. Normally, to solve this problem, we'd set up a ratio that looks like this. Step 2 result over the step 1 result equals x over the step 3 result. Then, we'd solve using algebra, meaning we'd cross-multiply to get the following equation. Step 2 result times step 3 result equals step 1 result times x. Finally, to solve for x, we would divide both sides of the equation by the step 1 result, and that leaves step 2 result times step 3 result divided by step 1 result equals x. To make it easier to read, we can simply flip it around to be x equals step 2 result times step 3 result divided by step 1 result. And to make this a little faster, we just skip to the final equation. Putting our example problems numbers into the equation, we end up with 0.07 times 92 divided by 0.1. Using a calculator shows that 0.07 times 92 equals 6.44. Dividing that by 0.1 equals 64.4. The last step is to add or subtract our answers from the first resulting value. In this case, because the resulting values go from high to low, we'd subtract 64.4 from 112, resulting in 47.6. If the resulting values go from low to high, we'd have added 64.4 to the first resulting value. Make sense? Okay, now let's look at the other problems and end by highlighting a fact I think you'll find really helpful. The second problem is to calculate the ground roll for our Cessna at 2,100 pounds, 1,300 feet pressure altitude, and 20 degrees Celsius. Let's walk through the steps. Step one, find the difference between the nearest index values. Looking at the chart, the first is 1,000 feet and the second is 2,000 feet. Subtracting them leaves 1,000 feet. Step two, we'll calculate the difference between the first index value and the intermediate value. So 1,300 minus 1,000 leaves 300 feet. In step three, we'll find the difference between the corresponding resulting values. In this case, 785 minus 715 leaves 70. Fourth, putting the numbers in the equation gives us 300 times 70 divided by 1,000. Using our calculator, 300 times 70 equals 21,000. Dividing that by 1,000 equals 21. 
Since the reference values go from low to high, we'll add 21 to the first one, or 715 plus 21 leaves an estimated ground roll of 736 feet. Okay, last problem, finding the winds aloft from Joliet. This problem is a bit trickier because we need to interpolate not only the wind speed, but the wind direction. So let's get to it. Step one, we'll subtract the index value of 3,000 from 6,000, which leaves 3,000. Step two, we'll find the difference between the first index value and the intermediate value, or 4,500 minus 3,000 equals 1,500. Step three, we'll find the difference in direction and the difference in velocity. The difference in direction is 270 minus 230, or 40 degrees. The difference in velocity is 23 minus 17, or 6 knots. Step 4. In this case, we'll set up two equations, one for direction and one for velocity, and then we'll solve both. The direction equation should be 1500 times 40 divided by 3000. 1500 times 40 equals 60,000 divided by 3000 equals a direction difference of 20. The velocity equation should be 1,500 times 6 divided by 3,000. So 1,500 times 6 equals 9,000. Dividing by 3,000 leaves a velocity difference of 3. Finally, since the resulting values go from low to high for both direction and velocity, we'll add the results to the first resulting values. So 230 plus 20 equals a direction of 250, and 17 plus 3 equals a velocity of 20. The final result is that the winds should be out of 250 at 20 knots. There you go. Based on what we've done, are you able to guess the helpful fact I mentioned earlier? Yep. The exact same technique works for all of these problems. In fact, you can use this technique for performance estimates, power settings, temperatures, distances, directions, and much, much more. As long as you can identify the index values, the resulting values, and know the intermediate value, you can use these same five steps to estimate the answer. If you'd like more practice, I've created a worksheet and a spreadsheet that can be used to help you test yourself, check your answers, and, and improve your skills. The link is in the description. Also, many folks have asked if they could work one-on-one -on -one with me. With that in mind, I've been able to free up some time in my calendar. If you're interested in booking a one-on-one -on -one session, I've also put the link for that in the description. Please be quick though, the slots are filling up fast. Finally, if you're interested in more aviation-related information, I would recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time.